Hi friends, welcome. So I'm here today with a short little lesson on the pass the hash attack. Now I'm sure in the past you somehow were able to extract credentials, that is a username and a password, and were able to then log into a victim system using these credentials. However, as you probably also know, it is more often than not the case that passwords aren't just stored in a simple text file on the user's desktop, but they're typically stored by the operating system in the form of a hash. Now, depending on the exact circumstance, we might need to take that hash and crack it to extract the actual password and then log in with that. But the problem there, of course, is not all hashes are crackable. If the password is really good, if they don't use any common words and let's say are 14 or 16 characters or more, it's gonna be really tough to crack that hash unless you have a GPU farm at your disposal. However, the good news is that in certain circumstances, especially in Windows where we use NTLM hash authentication, it could be that you don't even need to crack the hash at all and you could literally just use the hash as if it's a password. That's to say, you log in not with a username and a password, but instead with a username and a hash. And the way you would actually go about achieving this is by using one additional tool or script that will basically allow you to authenticate to the target system using a hash directly. So that's it, extremely simple, and at the same time, extremely useful, especially in Windows environments. So that being said, let's get to it. All right, friends, so here in my terminal, I just wanna kinda quickly orientate you before we go ahead and actually perform the attack. So there's a number of things going on. First of all, to demonstrate this attack, I've basically already popped a shell on the hack the box machine called Jeeves. Now we can see right here that I'm actually in the terminal, that is the Windows terminal, even though you might actually also realize that I'm on a Kali system. And that's of course because this tab right now is our reverse shell. So I'm here, I'll quickly run who am I? And you can see we're basically the lower level user Kosuke. So we wanna use a pass the hash attack in this specific circumstance now to get to admin. And what's more, you can see once we're here on the system, I enumerated the documents folder. And here in the documents folder is a file called ceh.kdbx. And what this is specifically, it is a key pass database. Now what's key pass? Key pass is simply an open source password manager. So in other words, you can think of this as a little golden box and inside of that little golden box are a number of hashes. And there is the potential for us to go ahead and extract some hashes from this golden box, which could potentially help us elevate our privileges. Now, one other thing I'd like you to take note of is we'd like to extract these hashes and crack the hashes on our own system. And so to do that, we are basically going to use an SMB server. Uh, so I'm gonna hit control tab and it's gonna take me to this other tab. Here you can see hacker at Kali. So this is obviously my own system. And so I just spun up the SMB server script as part of Impacket, meaning basically that here on my system, I've created a share called git good, and it's pointing right now to my home directory. Then right after I did that, on the victim system, I simply mounted it. You can see here my attacker IP and the share name of git good. I simply mounted that as the X drive. And we can see there I ran DIR against the X drive and this is the very disorganized and disheveled state currently uh, of my home drive, apologies. I probably should have picked a cleaner drive, but you know, whatever. Uh, so I'll just run DIR once again and we can see there again is the key pass database. And so I'm just gonna run copy. What am I gonna copy? I'm gonna copy this database file. Where do I wanna copy to? I wanna copy to the X drive which is of course actually our home drive back on our attacker system. And so right now we can head back to our attacker system and pretty much the rest of the attack will all be performed from there. So I'll hit Control Shift T, that'll open up a new tab for us. Make it a little bit bigger so I'm sure you guys can see. And just to make sure we actually have our KeePass database, I'm just gonna grab for it. And we can see right there we have ch.kdbx. Right, so now that we have the database on the system, the first thing we wanna do is actually open up this database so that we can hopefully access the hashes that are stored inside of it. Uh, and so to do this, we're gonna use the KeePass tool. Right now it's key, called KeePass2. 
Um, but you should be aware that it isn't installed on Kali by default. I'm using Kali here. Um, and so if you are using Kali or Ubuntu or Debian, uh, the way you can very easily and quickly install it is just by running sudo apt update, like you can see on the screen right here, uh, followed by a sudo apt install keypass2. And then once it is installed, we can simply write keypass2 from command line and it should now open it. I'm really sorry, I am aware that the UI here is incredibly small, but I toyed around and I couldn't really figure out how to do it. So I'm just going to be maybe a little bit overbearing and I'm just gonna explain exactly what I'm doing. And so I'm gonna click, you know, the open folder icon. And in there, I'm going to navigate to the actual file. And I'm gonna double click on ch.kdbx. Um, but we run into an issue. And the issue is that this little golden box containing the hash jewels that we're after is itself password protected. Um, but not to fear, because let's just head back to our terminal. I'm gonna cancel that. Um, because we can use a tool called keypass to john obviously part of the awesome John the Ripper suite with all the little mini tools at its disposal. Um, and then hopefully if we run keypass to john it will be able to dump the hash of the password that we need to go into the actual keypass database. Now in this case, now in this case, we can't simply use the hash to log into the keypass database. So we'll actually need to crack this. And so there's two things we need to do. First of all, I'm just gonna select that. So I'm gonna copy it. I'll create a new file and I'll just call it hash.txt. I'll drop it in there. And we'll go out and I'll save it. And so basically we have our hash in this folder right now. And now we're gonna crack it with hashcat. And so as not to take extra time by running on automatic mode where it has to detect the type of hash, let's just go and actually find out what the exact hash type is. Um, and so there is a way to do this from command line, but I always find that the easiest way for me is just by writing, just by Googling hashcat examples, and we can go right to this page. Uh, and we can see here it is a long table. And what we're basically interested in is this code that corresponds to a hash mode. And so right now I'm just gonna hit Control F so we can search this page. I'm just gonna write key pass. Uh, and we can see there's two types there, um, but irregardless of whether it's type one or two, the code remains the same. So the code is 13400. Right, let's head back to our terminal. And so now that we have our hash stored and we know the mode, which is 13,400, we can just run hashcat. And so on my system, hashcat is in the path variable, so I can just run it from here. And we'll specify our mode, which we said, of course, is 13,400. Our file is hash.txt. And now all that's left to do is specify the word list. So in this case, I'm gonna use our good old friend, Rakyu. And we have our results and we can see that Hashcat was able to crack it successfully and it took probably less than a minute to do so. And we can see right here that the password is moonshine1. Great, so that means right now we have the password that will allow us to go into the KeePass database. And so once again, I'll just write KeePass and to open up our GUI utility. And again, my apologies for the microscopic nature of the UI. So I'm gonna hit open I'll once again select the file, but now we have our password, of course. So I'll type in moonshine1. And we can see a number of passwords or hashes that are potentially interesting. You can see this one called It's a Secret, one called Keys to the Kingdom, the DC Recovery Password, that seems interesting. Jenkins Admin seems interesting. Uh, and then here in the bottom, we have one called Backup Stuff. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy this one for Backup Stuff. So I'm gonna just right click on it and say copy password. And so let's head back to the terminal. I'm gonna hit Control Shift T. And I'm just gonna paste that. Uh, so I'll write sudo nano password dot text. And we can see right here, once I've pasted it, that it obviously resembles an NTLM hash. 
So now that we've recognized that we have an NTLM hash in our position, you know, obviously on one hand we could go ahead and try and crack it, but a much shorter path with less friction would be to see if we could simply log in using this hash, using our pass the hash attack. So I'm gonna leave this right here. I'll hit Control Shift T again and open another tab. And so we should now be ready to perform our pass the hash attack. And as I said in the beginning, uh, we don't do this by simply trying to log on and provide the hash because the system would just read the hash we provided as our idea of the password and it will actually hash the hash to compare it to the hash, if that makes sense. Um, but in any case, we'll now go ahead and use a program called PTH Win EXE, which will help us to perform our pass the hash attack. And so we'll specify the username. Uh, we have to specify the domain first, Jenkins. And then we're gonna attempt to log in as the administrator. Uh, after that, we specify the IP of the victim system, which is 10.10.10.63. Uh, and we'd specify what we want to basically run and we wanna create a new shell, right, as administrator. And so you can notice I haven't provided a password or the hash rather, uh, because we'll hit enter. It's gonna ask us now for the password, but actually we're pasting the hash. And we can see that we were able to run command.exe and spawn a new shell. And if I run who am I, then indeed we are administrator. And that's it, that's a pass the hash attack. Heck yes brah. Okay friends, I hope you enjoy that short, sweet and simple, yet extremely useful little class. Periodically I'll still be dropping videos specifically on Windows Privilege Escalation and a few Hack the Box walkthroughs. Uh, but I've now also started working for a few weeks on two different courses. Uh, the one will be on Scapy, which is of course one of the most powerful Python libraries for security. And then additionally I have a course that I've created that I'm super excited about. Uh, that's going to be all about payload mastery. Um, it's really, if you are now a person that you kind of know how to generate your payloads, your standard payloads on in MSF in them, uh, but now you're really seeking to kind of like take your game to the next level uh, and you are perhaps a little bit intimidated with kind of coding and stuff like that, this is going to be the perfect way to kind of usher you in into a more intermediate level of payload creation. And so if you want to make sure that you don't miss out on that videos, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell. It would really mean a lot. But if not, no worries, of course. And I hope you keep well and have a lovely day. Until next time. Peace out.